MuleSoft's AnyPoint Studio makes connecting to any application, data source, or device incredibly easy. With hundreds of pre-built connectors, you can easily integrate with services such as Salesforce, Twitter, Twilio, LinkedIn, Facebook, GitHub, Box, and more, as well as connect to databases such as MySQL, MSSQL, Oracle, Mongo, or talk to protocols such as SFTP, SMTP, POP, IMAP, etc. And create a project in AnyPoint Studio couldn't be easier as you have a very simple to use visual drag and drop interface. So if I wanted to connect to GitHub and take a couple of different repositories of mine and combine them, I could do that in a matter of minutes. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. In this case, I'm going to take the HTTP connector, I'm going to grab that and drop that in. And what that does when you start with an HTTP connector is it creates a web application. So I can call this as if it was an API or a web application itself. And you also, if I click on that connector, Underneath, I have more information on the property, so I can uh, determine what the host should be. I can declare what port I want to run on, uh, enable HTTPS, uh, etc. Now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to connect to two GitHub repositories at the exact same time. So I can use a flow control called the scatter gather, drop that in, and that will allow me to put these different calls, which we processed identically, and then move forward. So if I grab the GitHub connector, drop that in, I'm going to use the newest one here. You'll notice if I click on that, it's going to first ask me for a config reference. If I click that plus thing, uh, it's just my credentials. So whether it be an API key, an access token, or in this case we're using basic auth, put in for my information, click OK. Uh, and then you'll see that I have all the available operations with the GitHub connector. So I can close an issue, I can create an issue, I can create a gist, but I want to get the get I want to get the comments in this case. So I go to get comment, get commits, excuse me. Uh, the owner is me, and I want to grab the HTML repository that I built. So I'm going to click enter on that. For the second one, I want to do the same thing, except for I want this one to be dynamic. So I'm going to select the GitHub config reference. I'm going to say git commits. So scroll on that. Uh, owner is still me, but now I'm going to use something called MEL, or the MuleSoft expression language, which allows me to get dynamic uh, variables or properties, including inbound properties. So in this case, I'm going to start off with message. I'm going to go to inbound properties. And you'll notice to the right of the screen, I have all the available properties to me. So I'm going to say http.query.params. And I want to get the param called repo, which will be required. So I put that in there, save that. But I want to go a bit further. I want to take both these different collections. I want to combine them into a single result. So I'm going to grab the collection aggregator, drop that in. And this is returning me back with an object with all this data in it, but I don't want an object. I want this returned in JSON format. So I'm going to grab the object to JSON transformer and drop that in as well. Now if I click save, click play here, it will start up uh, the Mule server. So I'm actually starting a server on my local host, and it will create the HTTP server that I requested to build a well as well on port 8081. So I jump back here, and let's just delete this really quick and go to port 8081. And it's right here, and you notice I received an error. The reason I received an error is because we said we have a parameter that is required that we need in order to do this, and so the API is breaking. So if we put that back in there, you'll now notice I have both collections from GitHub. I just made a call to two different GitHub repos, grab that data, combine that data, and transformed it to JSON. But let's say I want to go a step further. So I'm going to jump back to Mule. I want to store that into a database. I'm just going to grab the database connector, drop that in, click on it, and it'll say set your configuration again. I'm going to do MySQL. It would ask me for the host, port, user, password, and the database name. Click OK. It's then going to ask me about what type of operation I want to do. I want to insert this data. So I can scroll down Say I want to do a dynamic, insert into my calls, and we're going to call, let's see, uh, values, and then again using the Mel expression language, we're going to say payload, which is the return result. And this would insert the uh, payload into the my calls, allowing me to use the database. So just like that, I have connected to two different GitHub repositories. Uh, simultaneously on a web application server that I started, uh, aggregated the data, convert it to JSON, and store it into a database.
in less than three minutes. And of course, with any point studio, if you look down here, uh, we just close these up really quick. You'll see that there are literally hundreds of connectors that you can use. You can connect to Dropbox, Drupal, ESPN, uh, Facebook, FreshBooks, GitHub. The list just goes on and on. But it doesn't stop there. There's different scopes you can use. You can uh, cache the data. You can use different components. Uh, you have different transformers for how you want to modify the data to convert to JSON, convert to XML. You can filter the flows. You can change the, the flow with uh, the splitter, the scatter gather. Uh, if you want to have options, a choice flow. Of course, there's also air handling and security. But the whole purpose of AnyPoint Studio here is to give you all the tools you need to be able to integrate with whatever application you want, to connect to any application, any device, any data source, and really have the full power of your program behind it without having to write a single line of code. It's really designed to make integration simple.